Hello, today I'm going to demonstrate my uh, CD32 uh, with the MPEG module. I also have uh, an Amiga 4000 keyboard and an official Amiga mouse for this demonstration. Uh, the first thing I'm going to show you is uh, the early startup control. So I'm going to reset and hold down both mouse buttons. Uh, the reason I'm going to show you that is because under display options, you can switch this uh, system into PAL mode. This also works for the video CDs. So if you have any PAL video CDs and you need to switch modes, or vice versa, you can do that through the early startup control because the CD, uh, video CD module does play both. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit cancel because I don't want to switch modes. I'm going to show you the expansion board diagnostic screen, which will show you that this uh, unit does have a video CD module. It shows up as board 1, uh, manufacturer 514, product number 106, and its status is working. So I'll go ahead and hit continue. And I'll just say boot. And I'll put in an official uh, uh, CDI uh, video CD. This is uh, one of the ones that's only playable on the Philips CDI. But at the last minute, Commodore had added... Uh, a patch to allow it to play the CDI digital video movies. So uh, here's the interface. Uh, it came up as Star Trek uh, 6 Undiscovered Country, disc 1 of 2. It has uh, two tracks on it. Um, if there was only one track, it would just automatically play the movie. So uh, since there's more than one track, it'll come up to this menu. Originally, when it was demonstrated at the World of Commodore in Pasadena in 1993, when it originally debuted, um, the video CD uh, content and screen and control was all done through the CD player screen, which uh, you could switch it in the corner in the same place where CD plus G was. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit play. So there's the Paramount logo, and I'm going to go ahead and um, skip ahead. Don't tell me that was any meteor shower. Negative, sir. Subspace shock. The quality is not barrier. actually not that three, bad. Two, three, it mark, wasn't seven, uh, great quality, Location. but it was definitely watchable. Um, practice, one of the nice things practice, about the CD32 is that they did buttons. turn on interlacing when you play a VCD movie, so it does look a this little better on some TVs, uh, especially tube-based TVs. Uh, looks section. slightly better than a Philips CDI or source. other uh, player that didn't interlace. Yes, sir. I've confirmed the location of Praxis, but... What is it? I cannot confirm the existence of Praxis. On screen. Magnify. So I'm going to go ahead and reset now, and I'm going to hold down both mouse buttons so I can get into the early startup control again. So here's the early startup control. I'm going to switch from uh, this movie, and I'm going to put in the uh, Amiga CD32 demo disc uh, version 2.0. Um, I'm using that disc because it has a full install of uh, Workbench and some other tools that I'm going to de use for demonstration. So I'm going to go ahead and boot with no startup sequence. So this will bring me to the command prompt. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to assign the temporary folder which is designated as drive T. It's also, uh, also on the Amiga it could be a path. Uh, in this case it's a path. I'm going to assign that to RAM because that's a, a writable location. Just in case something wants to uh, write to a temporary location, it, it'll be able to. You'll notice um, if I dir the S path, you'll see a startup sequence.wb. Uh, this one's been disabled. They just took the normal startup sequence and they renamed it startup sequence.wb and they made a custom one for uh, the demo of this disk. So I want to execute the startup sequence.wb because that's the default workbench. So I type in execute. 
S path startup sequence. So now it's executing the uh, normal workbench uh, startup sequence. So here comes the uh, normal Amigo Workbench screen. So uh, you can see it registering. I have one, almost 1 1.8 megs free of graphic memory, and there's no fast memory that's dedicated just to the CPU. So it's all this unified memory uh, used for uh, all the Amiga custom processors and the CPU. So I'm going to go ahead and say about, so you can see that this is a version uh, 3.1 ROM. I'm going to hit OK. Um, so if you open up the demo disk, you'll notice that it has all the standard workbench programs on it. So it's got, uh, including, I'm going to move this out of the way because it's covering up the tools folder. Um, if I go into preferences, you'll see that everything from the font to the location to pointer, sound, printer, time, the uh, preference tools to set to set the desired mode that you want to use. Uh, I'm going to open up screen mode and select high res laced. So give me a little more screen space. I'll hit use. So now I'm in interlace mode. So I'll go ahead and move that out of the way. I'll go ahead and close it. Um, one of the things I want to do is um, because if I open the door it'll automatically reset the CD32 which is the stock thing it does for the disc. It assumes that you're done with the game and you want to play something else. So it automatically restarts. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go into storage and under DOS drivers there's a thing called a RAD disc. A RAD disc is a recoverable RAM disc. So I could basically boot to a virtual disc that's in memory which is what I want to do. So I'm going to go ahead um, I'm just going to double click on it and mount it. And this becomes a normal 880K Amiga uh, disk, virtual disk, inside memory. So I'll go ahead and format it. And I want to select fast file system and no trash can. You don't necessarily have to format it. I just do it because I want to make sure it has the fast file system on there. Um, I'm going to call this RAM drive. And I want to say format. And there we go. So um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a commands folder on here because I need to put some files on there because this is going to become a bootable disk and I want some commands on there that I can use. So I'll make a folder called C inside the RAM drive and I'll go ahead and open it up. I'll put it down here and I'll say show all files because I want to see as I'm dumping programs in there, I want to see them show up. I don't want them to just disappear and just assume they made it there. So I'll go ahead and open up the CD. And I'll do the same thing here. I'll say show all files. So this shows all the files and folders that don't have uh, an icon for them. So the system will assign it an icon. So I'll go ahead and scroll over. I'm going to view it by name. Okay, so there's the C folder, which has all the commands in it. So I'm going to open that up. And there's a few commands I'm going to want. Uh, the first thing i definitely going to want is the set patch. So I'll go ahead and scroll down, and I will find set patch. And I'll copy it onto um, my RAM disk. Uh, my RAM drive, actually, is what I called it. Um, so I'm going to copy set patch. I'll copy Mictor. Um, I'll copy load. I need load wb. So I'll scroll up. Here's load wb. Uh, dir. And uh, take list as well. And then there's some other commands that are also on this disk that I would like to get a hold of. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down. There's a demos folder right here. And I'll go ahead and open that up and I'll say show all files. And I go inside bin. 
I'm going to show my name again so it's easier to see. And there's a few extra commands in here. These are CD32 specific. Um, there's CD2X speed, which tells the drive to always go at 2X speed. Uh, there's a CD Excel player, which I'll put in there. And there's also a CD MPEG player, which is for the video CD module, which is the main thing that I am after. There's also this Joy Mouse, which will redirect the joystick input to the mouse input, which is also good to have. So now that I've got all my commands in here, let me uh, get these out of the way. Open it up, and I'll close it down so I can show you that it's actually on there. So here's the RAM drive, uh, command folder C. Say show all files. I say show by name. So here's all the basic commands that I've now loaded into memory. Uh, this disk is bootable. It will boot up. Um, I don't have an S folder. I could make a startup sequence to tell it to load Workbench directly, but I think it'd be easier for me just to type it in. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open the door, which is going to automatically reset the CD32 because I don't have the no reboot command on this disk. Um, you will also notice it'll boot immediately to the RAD disk. I'm going to go ahead and type in one of the commands we put on there, uh, set patch. So there's set patch, and I'm going to say load WD will load the workbench and then I'll say NCLI which will get rid of the, get rid of the console so there it is just a RAM drive I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put in a video CD this is uh, the secret of NIM disk 2 I'll go up here and say execute command new shell I'll move it down and out of the way uh, there's my uh, RAM disk showed up too, which is nice. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to jar drive C so I can just show you the commands that I copied over here. I'm going to demonstrate the uh, MPEG module playing from Workbench. So I'll say CD MPEG track uh, 2. Now don't tire him out. No. So then up comes the secret in MPEG yes. 2. Say what you want, then leave. Um, this this one is, I believe, non-interlace. Uh, this particular player, I don't think does interlace. Thank you, Mr. But if your workbench isn't interlace, it will be interlace. If I type in Amiga M, I'll come back to the workbench, and you'll see that it is uh, genlocked behind the workbench screen, just like it is if you had an Amiga genlock in a video source. It's doing this internally on the CD32. So that's basically my demonstration of the uh, Amiga CD32 with the MPEG module. Um, basically some of the ins and outs on how it loads internally on the system and how it is controlled through the workbench. Um, this is um, an interesting um, product even though I think they only made a few thousand of these MPEG modules so not everybody has them. That's why I wanted to demonstrate uh, the capabilities today. So I hope you enjoyed my video. Thanks.